Hey everybody, Preston Polder here with Pocket Jacks Comics, and I wanted to talk about an old 1983 TSR module entitled Palace of the Silver Princess, which really inspired me, and I have since gone and made a comic book, Palace of the Golden Princess, and that one absolutely sold out on Kickstarter. And part of why people liked it is the fair amount of sexiness about the comic book, and I'm doing a Kickstarter for a module and miniatures, and there's a fair amount of sexiness there too. And now I've never been a stranger to using sexy ladies or sexual imagery, but I felt it especially appropriate here because the original 1983 module was pulled from the shelves only 72 hours after release because of its own racy sexual content. And I want to take a minute just to show what all the hubbub was about way back then. Keep in mind, this was back during Satanic Panic, and this module was d d basic as opposed to advanced, so the marketing behind it was this was intended for a younger audience, and according to Gene Wells, when the Bloom Brothers saw this, they were freaking out. And I'm going to play a little bit of a voice interview that Save or Die did with her in just a minute, but she said that she didn't like this image, she wasn't shown this image until very late, and she, she couldn't get it pulled because then the module would be incomplete. By the way, this was the first module ever written by a woman, but we can't blame her for the art because she wasn't the artist. So let's take a look at how she wrote up the description of this room. All right, a beautiful young woman hangs from the ceiling. Nine ugly men can be seen poking their swords lightly into her flesh, all the while taunting her in an unknown language at pulling at what few clothes she has on, securely binding them together, while the rest of her hair has been used to tie her hands to a ceiling beam. A long U-shaped table dominates most of the floor space. A huge fireplace is on the north wall. To a certain extent, the artist gave the description that the writer had intended, so I feel like Gene Wells is kind of displacing stuff. And in an interview, and in a Kotaku interview, which by the way, link in the description, uh, the editor, Mr. Sullivan, said that really it was her kind of pushing a lot of this kink content in and that that's what she wanted. So to me, her reaction seems a little bit like, oh, this was not, not my fault, not what I intended. What I found specifically interesting and what I've kind of based my setting on is this female-dominated kingdom, which is, of course, an s &M trope, as fans of mine are already well aware. Now... As with basically all modules of the day, and for that matter, most modern modules, there's a local town. And check out Gene Wells' description of the local town. So the local municipality she calls Galuvia. This is a ruthless place filled with terror. The ruler of this chaotic nightmare is Lady Dehanis. She rules the barony with a firm and unforgiving hand. To gain supreme rulership, of this tiny barony, she killed her husband. A prime example of the type of laws her ladyship favors is one forbidding males, except those in her service, from being on the streets after sunset unless accompanied by a female who is age 15 or older. Which, by the way, I specifically reference in my comic book. This law meets little resistance as everyone fears her baronial guards. Though DeHannis' warriors are primarily male, her commanders are all females. Tough, chaotic women who instill fear by a mere gaze and who fear little save Dehanis and the elite male fighters who serve as her personal bodyguards and paramours. There was kink in the book beyond just the Decapus's art. Now, in the interview she engaged with Save or Die, she spent a lot of time discussing the Ubus, which are these three-headed monsters. Some people said that those heads resembled TSR staff. Uh, her main objection seemed to be that she didn't like the fact that she wanted them to be all male or all female, and the three-headed monsters got changed by the artist to be two males and a female, or two females and a male, and she didn't like that. So let's go ahead and hear what Gene Wells had to say. And again, special thanks to Save or Die. Link in the description to go listen to the full interview. Well, at 23 years old, back then, you didn't know what SDM was. Mm -hmm. or anything like that. I mean, for someone who doesn't know what S&M was, she certainly seemed to have a fairly good understanding of the tropes around it. And then, of course, early 80s, there was a fair amount of this stuff leaking into television, you know, like episodes of Buck Rod. If it was common knowledge that Zantia was a world without men, we'd be invaded immediately.
Buck finds himself the center of attention on a planet of desperate women with a shocking sequence. There was some crazy stuff going on, so maybe it was an accident. A lot of this just seems like after the fact kind of saying, no, no, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but that's just my take. Uh, Will said, why did you write SM into a child module? And Ed and I just looked at each other and went, what's S&M? And Will Nebling didn't believe us. But we just stood there looking dumbfounded because we didn't know. And, and S&M came in on the Decker Plus. Uh, Tom Mulvey had, had rewritten the um, yeah. module? Yeah, and he, he wouldn't let me help. That seems rather harsh, by the way, to not let her. It's like, she got completely yanked from the book. Was this, did Gary tell him to do this, or the Bloom Brothers told him to do the this? The Bloom Brothers. Ah, and what did Gary think about this at the time? He didn't have much of a say, or? He didn't have much of a say. He said that he was, there was three board of directors. He was one of them, but they had, they would outvote him. Right. Because they were brothers. And if he had had his say... He said it, it was ridiculous and not worth bothering with. Aware of the flap over the art in B3, and did you ever find it offensive to the point you'd be wanting it omitted off of there? Yes, I did. I wanted it taken off. But Jim Roloff uh, wouldn't let me take it out because it was too close to deadline. And I was mad because... Um, uh, Errol Otis had made my ubus into um, hermaphrodites and, and screwed the whole thing up. She, again, making them hermaphrodites, she references it more than once in this interview. Clearly it got to her. It's not one of the things anybody ever cites uh, when they talk about why the module might have been pulled. There's, again, speculation that Maybe those were TSR staffer heads that were drawn on, but so I'm not sure why she spent so much time kind of attacking the hermaphroditic ubus. Was there any other projects you started working on when you were at TSR that never got published or printed? I wanted to do another module, but they wouldn't let me. So the TSR um, offices had their own dormitory for people to stay while they were working there? No, it was just, it was our agreement, just this, an agreement between Jeff Leeson and Dave Conant and Joe and Alan Hammock. Hmm. And we all lived in the same house. Interesting. And um, everybody had their own space. What was it like living in the house with a bunch of people like that? It's okay. I mean... They were just, everybody was just everybody. Right. Um, the, the lady across the street kept saying orgies were going on. No, we all just lived there in, in peace and quiet and we'd come home. So both at work and as well in off time, these allegations of sexual impropriety seemed to be surrounding her. It, it was certainly very, well... One of the early experiments in cancel culture. From work, and that's where we'd unwind. Now, if you had a chance to go back into time, would you have not written what you've written down, or are you still stick by what you wrote? I think I would have written the Decapus a little different. Yeah. Uh, that That's the only thing I would have written different. And, and I would have made sure that Errol Otis understood that... I did not write her, her most of the There we go. Uh, thanks again to Save or Die. By the way, I have put up a old school renaissance to fifth edition pre-module as well as suggested rules changes about things you can do. I worked with Courtney Campbell on this. It's a link is down there in the description to drive through RPG. It's up for play test. I love to hear your notes about that, and of course, check out my comic book. Again, that's up at Drive Through Comics. That's a free download there, too. So, this has been Preston Polto with Pocket Jacks Comics. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.